Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Abe Lincoln, The Boy Who Loved Books by Kay Winters Illustrated by Nancy Carpenter To Marguerite Winters, who has always loved Lincoln, K.W. To the Bevel Giles family, a family of book lovers, N.C. Special thanks to Jessica Schulte, a sensitive editor, K.W. In the wilds of Kentucky, 1809, a boy was born. His mother called him Abraham, his last name Lincoln. His bed was made from corn husks, his covers skins from bears, his cabin built with logs from towering trees. Abe said his first words in that one-room cabin, took his first steps on that hard dirt floor. A wood fire chased the cold and cooked corn pone. The door swung open, shut, on leather hinges. A tiny window looked out on his world. When he was two, his folks packed their few goods, moved Abe and sister Sarah to Knob Creek. The Cumberland Trail ran close to their new cabin. Abe saw peddlers, pioneers, politicians, traders, slaves pass by. As Abe grew, he talked to travelers, heard where they'd been, where they were going. He saw their world was wider than his own. His ideas stretched. His questions rose. His dreams were stirred. At school, he worked with numbers 1 to 10. He shaped his letters A to Z with a charcoal stick. He wrote them down, day in, day out, in school, at home, in dust, in snow, on logs of wood. The letters cast a magic spell. He loved to learn. His parents had no schooling, but when day was done, the family sat close by the fire. His mother shared the Bible stories she knew by heart. His father spun yarns, told jokes, and made them laugh. When Abe was seven, the family moved again. The Lincolns set out one December morning, their bits and pieces piled on two stout horses. They walked and rode a hundred miles to Indiana. They crossed the Ohio River on a makeshift ferry. Abe helped his father hack a trail through forests thick with trees and tangled vines until at last they came to land they claimed. No cabin waited at Little Pigeon Creek. Instead, a half-faced camp of branches, twigs, and logs was where they had to stay. One side opened wide to wilderness. The family kept the wood pile stacked. The blazing fire scared off wild animals that roamed the woods. Bears growled. Wolves howled. Panthers screamed. Abe shivered. Dark was a fearsome time. Then settlers came to help. The family raise a home. Now Abe and Sarah had a loft to call their own. Abe loved to climb up to his sleeping place. But snow and wind blew through the cabin's cracks. The outside crept indoors and iced the walls. Just once, Abe shot a turkey in the woods, but not again. He vowed he would not take the breath from living things. When Abe was eight, he helped his father clear their land. He learned to swing an axe and fell the trees, but he longed to learn from books, go back to school. 
When Abe turned nine, dark days fell upon him. Milk sickness took his mother to her grave. Abe whittled pegs to put in her pine coffin, his grief so deep he could not speak her name. A year limped by. His father went to find a wife. He brought back a widow with three children. Her heart so wide, she took in Abe and Sarah as her kin. And she owned books. She let Abe read when chores were done. Once more, their house of logs became a home. She sent the children back to school. Abe wore two short buckskins and a raccoon cap. He drew his letters with a turkey buzzard quill. Abraham Lincoln, his hand and pen. He will be good, but God knows when. He learned to add, subtract on planks of wood. But most of all, he loved to read. When spelling bees, spin yarns, tell tales. When school was shut, Abe hired out to farmers. His father kept the earnings for the family. Abe split rails, dug wells, chopped trees, but all the while he worked, he yearned to learn. To anyone who'd listen, he'd like to say the things I want to know are in books. Once rain leaked through the cabin roof and soaked a book he'd borrowed. For three hot days, Abe pulled stalks of corn in his friend's field to pay him back. When Abe plowed, a book sat in his back pocket. At each row's end, he'd take it out and read. His horse would wait for him to turn the page. The neighbors shook their heads and called him lazy. They did not understand this bookish boy. Abe knew he must move on, out of the wilderness. Splitting rails and plowing land was not his dream. At 19, he pulled a flat boat down the river, saw people in places beyond backwoods, saw black men, women, and their children bound in chains. A sign above their heads read, Auction Block. A life for sale, like hatchet, axe, or plow? Abe knew it was unjust to own another. New Salem, Illinois, was where Abe settled. A hundred folk or more lived in this place. He hired on to run the general store. Folks like to tell that once he overcharged someone six cents. But honest Abe walked miles to give it back. Even here, Abe was asked to prove his worth with brawn, not brains. The owner of Abe's store set up a wrestling match against the leader of a wild and rowdy gang. Reluctantly, Abe took Jack Armstrong on. Some said that Abe pinned Jack to the floor. Others swore Armstrong beat Abe with a trick. But when Jack saw Abe's strength, he shook his hand, and they became close friends in years to come. By firelight, he studied law without a teacher. Soon he became a lawyer in the courts. Abe saw that words could free or jail a man. He found that words could change the way folks thought. When politics began to call his name, Abe aimed his words at wrongs he'd like to right. Friends said that he should run for public office. He tried for Congress first, and then the Senate. At last he ran for the highest office in the land. Abraham Lincoln Born in a log cabin Child of the frontier Head in a book Elected our 16th president. From the wilderness to the White House, he learned the power of words and used them well. Author's Note 
Abraham Lincoln was born on the frontier in 1809 to Nancy and Thomas Lincoln. His formal education amounted to less than a single year. Lincoln was encouraged to read by his mother, but when he was nine years old, Nancy died of milk sickness, a disease caused by drinking milk from cows that have eaten poisonous white snake root. A year later, Thomas brought home a new wife to be stepmother to Abe and his sister Sarah. To Abe's delight, she arrived with books. As he grew into a young adult, he saw how powerful words were and he spent hours writing speeches, debates, and practicing his presentations. In 1842, he married Mary Todd and they had four boys, Robert, Eddie, Willie, and Tad. Eddie and Willie died in childhood, leaving the Lincolns bereft. In 1847, Abe began his two-year term in Congress. Then he left politics and focused on his law career. But the states were deeply divided. The slavery issue was simmering. Lincoln could not keep silent. He ran for Senate. He lost twice, but he didn't give up. His words were quoted. His ideas debated. He became nationally known. In 1860, he was elected the 16th President of the United States. He served his country during one of the most chaotic times in our history, the Civil War. During these dark days, he led the struggle to preserve the Union. On January 1, 1863, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that slaves in those areas of the Confederacy still in rebellion were free. Lincoln was re-elected in 1864, but on April 14, in 1865, he was shot in Ford's Theater by John Wilkes Booth. Lincoln died the next day. Secretary of War Edwin Stanton said, Now he belongs to the ages. Today, Lincoln's face shines on our pennies. His figure meditates at the Lincoln Memorial. His words ring out on patriotic occasions. Because of Lincoln, we have a United States, and no citizen is owned by another. Abraham Lincoln's love of books, the ideas they stirred, and his way with words kept our nation on the path to freedom. We travel on. The Emancipation Proclamation is not a law in the usual sense of the word. It was not passed by Congress. It was a presidential declaration in time of war.